For over 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida. And now, from Pensacola, Florida, it's Within Reason with Bob Kerrigan and Bill Rankin. Good evening and welcome to Within Reason with Bob Kerrigan and Bill Rankin. Bob is away, I'm Bill Rankin, and with me is a gentleman I've looked forward to having on the show for some time. Uh, this is Professor Clarence Elabash, Professor Emeritus from UWF, which he tells me he was very generous, uh, self-effacing, and said it just means retired, but it does mean more than that. It's an honor that, that uh, you have to achieve by, uh, uh, by, by, by the recognition of your peers. And, and Dr. Elabash, stay tuned for this now. Dr. Elabash knows an extraordinary amount about the city of Pensacola and city finances. And this is, this is my label. I don't know if you'd agree with it. I think he's a public intellectual, which means he's, he's not <laughs> shilling for a business. He hasn't got investments that he's pushing. He's not, not trying to advocate for some cause. But he's just interested and knowledgeable about ideas and, and willing to share those ideas and that knowledge. And I think you're going to find it interesting. Um, you have, have written and refined a little paper that talks about Pensacola generally. Yes. And I think that's a good place to start, about the good and the bad. And what, what do you think about, and well, mainly from a financial point of view? Well, Pens Pensacola uh, has many assets and advantages. In the past, we were the envy of, of neighboring communities along, mm -hmm. along the Gulf Coast. But Pensacola fell behind. Uh, we did not do like Savannah and Charleston or even Little Fairhope. We, f we fell behind uh, for a number of reasons, uh, several reasons. But the main thing to address now is we have lots of assets, yeah. and we've got to start some kind of revival. Well, what, what, did, what did Fairhope and Savannah and those places do that Pensacola well, the, did? Well, access to the waterfront. Uh -huh. See, one, one of the reasons the city of Pensacola has had problems is we had two miles and 100 acres of waterfront and mm -hmm. no access. Yeah. But then uh, a couple of years ago, four or five years ago, we opened Plaza de Luna. It was an instant success. Mm -hmm. People like to see the waterfront. I'm told they also like to see yeah. mountains. So if you've got yeah. mountains or waterfront, yeah. open it up to the public and let yeah. them get there. There's been a number of visitors here who are urban experts. Uh, Ken Ford at the IHMC mm -hmm. has had a series of them. And there's two common themes uh, for, for revival of a, of a community. One is walkability, and, mm -hmm. the, and the other is convenient, safe, access to the waterfront if you have mm -hmm. a waterfront and 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 we have have not we have not done that but we got this community as a whole has so many advantages we got the we've got the beaches we have the national seashore mm -hmm. uh we've got the navy museum uh the blue angels got a regional airport a, a big asset big asset and incidentally the city doesn't pay anything into it or get anything out it's a freestanding business mm -hmm. on its own uh, but we have a, we have uh, health care, outstanding health care. We have a splendid state college, mm -hmm. an excellent university, and we have a little-known Pensacola Christian College, which is also a nice. We we have all kinds of assets, uh, but we we have not uh, taken advantage of them, and we 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 need a revival, and the revival should be downtown because that's where the historic district is. That's where the cultural activities are. And downtown Pensacola is the financial uh, and business center for the entire two-county mm -hmm. area. We, we're a two-county economy, Santa Rosa County yeah. and, yeah. and Escambia County. So, so we need to start a revival. Now, when people start talking about revival, they start talking about financial incentives to get business to move here. Right. That's not what you need to start with. In order to start a revival, you need an attractive, clean, and safe community. 
an attractive community that people want to look at. It's safe and it's clean, plus quality public education. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what the emphasis, emphasis should be on. And, and uh, uh, un unfortunately, uh, there's a lot to be done downtown. Uh, roundabouts to make access to Seville easier, mm -hmm. sidewalk repair, access to the waterfront. We've got a, about a mile or walk along the waterfront from the bridge to Bartram Park. Mm -hmm. And it's got a spectacular view. Yeah. But you can't get to it. Right, it's hard to get across the street. You got to go up to Palafox to get a safe crossing. You got yeah. to go to Palafox Street and get a traffic signal yeah. to cross over. We need access there. We yeah. need to connect things. For example, we got the, the, the beautiful new Maritime Park. We need to connect that conveniently mm -hmm. for pedestrians going to the Palafox corridor and on over to the historic corridor. Well, now you talk about the, the, the waterfront access. Isn't that what the Community Maritime Park? was well, all about. That's right. That's right. And, and uh, uh, not only is the ballpark uh, a great success, uh, there's some early indications that made that the amphitheater is, is a is success also. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but that remains to be seen. But now, back to the revival of Pensacola, there's a problem. We've invested so much in the maritime park mm -hmm. that it's going to be many years before we have money to invest in anything else. The city is, is, is obligated on, on that 45 or 50 million dollar in bonds mm -hmm. plus 19 million uh, to ECUA to, for, for, to clean up the sewer mm -hmm. plant property. Uh, the city doesn't have any money. And, and as we mentioned before the, uh, the show started, there are things that we're no longer going to have that we did have because, because of this the city debt. has no money. Yeah. Uh, even in Old Seville is, is a huge success and has been for 25 years, yeah. but it's, it's going. Some of the things down at, at Plaza de Luna, like the, the Friday night movies, mm -hmm. they're gone. We have a Veterans Memorial Park that's been neglected, and the city has not accepted, uh, says they can't afford to accept responsibility mm -hmm. for maintaining it and cleaning it up. Well, now, the, the, the paper today was just full of praise for the, the, the baseball team was a huge success. Um, people love it. It really is. I, I, uh, I ran into a young lady who, who I saw at the last game I was at, which was Saturday, and she said something pretty good. She'd only been to one game, and she said, uh, she said, it's a happy place. You know, little kids are running around, and it is. So with, with that being a big success, they couldn't have planned for it to be a, any better a success than it's been, selling out a lot of games. Oh, what went it, wrong? It's, it's, it, well, uh, what's wrong is that what the public doesn't understand, the baseball team didn't build the ballpark. The taxpayers built the ballpark, and regardless of how, there's several ways you can figure it, but I say it's cost the city between 20 and 25 million dollars uh, for the ballpark. Wow. Because in addition to building the ballpark itself, there's some other joint costs and other costs mm -hmm. associated with it, and and the city is going to be paying that back at a rate of about three million dollars a year for the next 25 wow, or that's 30 a, that's years. That's a lot of money. So there's no no money. Uh, to do other things that yeah. need to be done downtown. Okay. Now, now cities don't build parks to make money out of them. I mean, you, you build a nice You're city park. You ball just parks? Well, just, let's just take parks in general. Right. The idea of a park is it, it's attractive. It improves the quality right. of life. I mean, Pensacola's right. got a lot of parks. They don't charge admission. That's right. Uh, but the idea is it makes the whole city more attractive, right. increases property That's right. values. That's right. So, so what, what, what's wrong here? Well, Just what, too expensive. What's, what's wrong is that people spend a lot of money at the ballpark. Yeah. But that money is money that's not being spent elsewhere in the Pensacola area. Mm -hmm. Ballparks do not attract out-of-town people. People don't come from out of town to, and spend money to see the ball. The ballpark attracts local people, a few out of town, like from Mobile when Mobile right. is playing in. But right. likewise, some pens, that's all. Well, surely up. we get people from, from Okaloosa County and Santa Rosa County. From, I don't think you get me from Okaloosa, but you get some from you get some from Santa Rosa County, I'm sure, yeah. because Gulf Breeze. Right. And, and, and that's part of the. And, and people come from Gulf Breeze over here at ball games and they spend money, you know, what, $40, 50 a night for a family to go. Probably. Probably, yeah. sure. Uh, that's money that's not being spent probably in Gulf Breeze. Mm -hmm. And we're in the same economic so unit. Uh -huh. what, what affects Gulf Breeze affects us. So it's just person. shifting money that's around right. in the local that's right. economy. So uh, and, and, and it's hard to find. I've never seen a study that recommended building ballparks for municipal governments. I've seen lots of well, quotations about, that say ballparks are bad investments. 
Really? Yes. Ballparks are bad. And well, bad. well, surely before we had well, this ballpark, well, we had know, impact at, studies well, and people looking at before they spent they never, the all these millions, they the must have looked at it. The city never got an independent expert on ballparks to advise them. Mm -hmm. Never. They, they had an independent real estate advisor, and he advised them not to hire the fellow they hired to manage the uh -huh. Maritime Park. Yeah. So, so much for that advice. <laughs> but, but as far as I can tell, they never talked to anyone who was independent. They only listened to those who would benefit from the, from the proposal. Mm -hmm. Well, to bring us up. What, I remember seeing the first drawing of the Community Maritime Park, and UWF was involved. There was going to be a maritime museum down there, uh, a lot of stuff that we don't have now. What we have is a ballpark and an amphitheater, and it's a terrific ballpark and a, and a, by and all and accounts. A beautiful, beautiful lawn. Yeah. Yeah. What what went wrong? Where did all that other stuff go? Well, it, it slowly frittered away. Uh, uh, the UWF was going to have a, a classroom building down there. Yes. That was never really going to happen, I don't think, and that fell off early on. Uh -huh. The Maritime Museum fell apart because there was no money. To, to build a Maritime Museum required $20 million to build it, and the, and the university was going to borrow, uh, was going to raise $10 million, mm -hmm. and then they were going to get a state matching grant. The state had a, a matching grant yeah. program. Well, hard times came. The university uh -huh. could only raise 3 or 4 or $5 million at the most, and the state canceled the matching program. Uh -huh. So there was that. So that's The just... Maritime Park and the Maritime Research Station uh, uh, went away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and there were other things. If you recall, the brochure showed a, a fishing village down there. Yeah. That, that, uh, I, I don't think that was the name of Ballyhoo to begin with. Uh -huh. but, it never uh -huh. but, but the one that really, really is interesting, they showed tall ships down there. Yeah. There's no the, deep water access to the Maritime <laughs> Park. <laughs> that was never part of it. And, and, and there's not going to be... Uh, that used to, yeah, those tall ships have to go, the, go down, story, way down in the water. That used to be the Port of Pensacola. Yeah, and that well, you were maybe I wasn't here then, but maybe you were. There were three wharfs that went out, and railroad cars went out uh -huh. there, and it caught on fire. And oh, it, I didn't it know that. When, when was that? Oh, about 1958. I'm told uh -huh. well, I wasn't living here then, but I suppose about 1958. It caught on fire, and so now th there's a whole bunch of pilings out there, hundred if not uh -huh. thousands, at least hundreds, with probably thousands of pilings out there, uh -huh. which obstructs... So, uh, yeah, so you're not going to get any tall right. ships they, they in there without able, cleaning them up. There may be a railroad car, <laughs> a freight car, too, out there. Uh -huh. so, so you see, there's not going to be any... Uh, no tall ships. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what, would we miss anything? The uh, convention centers. Conve everybody's building convention yeah. centers. There. And, and, yeah. the, and, and, the, and, and they're not very... They're not profitable. So we either. got a we got a ballpark, and the, and the, the yeah. city's on the hook for a lot of money, despite the success of the baseball team. That's right. The yeah. success of the baseball park does not affect the city's bond payments, mm -hmm. nor some direct and indirect costs the city is going to have to spend to maintain. And, and you don't the think the ancillary park. benefits of, you know, all the excitement and people coming downtown are, are, are really that big a deal? Well, no, I think it's nice. And it, it's certainly yeah. the. Uh, People have enjoyed it. There's oh, no question. If, no if you go down there, and I've been but, to, but to a bunch of games, people enjoy it. That, that there are other things to be done, and there's no money because right. the, mon the future monies are all tied up uh, in that. Right. And there's some other things that the city's obligated on, but the yeah. money's t tied up there. Uh, uh, the city's one hope to get something real money for a revival uh, is the so-called restore funds. Uh huh. Uh, the University of West Florida wants to get a grant from the Restore Fund to redo the historic district. Really? The University of West Florida owns, I think it's 26 buildings in the Seville Oh, area. I didn't know that. The University of West Florida inherited them when the uh -huh. old, uh, what they call it, historical yeah, authority, or whatever it was. was, uh -huh. was so the, the University of West Florida owns them. And, and they get by... But as I heard President Bent say a year or two ago, we need a magnet to get people to come down there. Right. And they don't have a magnet. So that's well, not the magnet, uh, apparently. There was, uh, the, the University of West Florida proposal, and I, I've heard it in, outlined several times, uh, is to, develop, to, to refurbish the Seville area and make it into a, a historical attraction. Mm -hmm. the, the theory is, and, and I don't know enough to say it's right or wrong, the theory is that more and more people want to travel to historical heritage 
areas yeah. in their own country. And that uh, cities that have reestablished and, and, and brought up to date and refined the historical areas uh -huh. are getting a lot of vistas. And, and, the, and I, I, beyond that, I can only refer you to the University of West Florida. Yeah. Wow. But that's it's not a bad I mean, that, Pensacola sure has a lot of history going back. The city should latch on to that big time because mm -hmm. that's the only option, only opportunity that I know of where they can get a big, get shared a big hunk of money to make a real difference downtown. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. We're, we're, uh, I'm Bill Rankin, and you've joined Within Reason. With me is Professor Emeritus from UWF, Dr. Clarence Elabash. And, and we're going to take a break in a minute, but one thing we didn't do uh, is, is talk about you. I mean, being a professor was your second career, wasn't it? Yes, I was in the Air Force for 23 years and mm -hmm. uh, went back to school after I retired from the Air Force. And tell us what you did in the Air Force. Well, I, 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 was, um, I was a pilot, but I spent a lot of time in administrative work. Mm -hmm. I, I, in the 23 years I was in, I spent seven years overseas and nine in Washington, D.C. area. Uh -huh. and, and so that didn't leave much for the uh, leftover. Mm -hmm. for, but I was very fortunate. I, the Air Force sent me to the University of Michigan to get a, a master's degree in business administration. Uh -huh. And that was, uh, it was very, uh, very beneficial. Has so been all my life. You came out of the Air Force with a, with a, an MBA, yes. and, and then I went back to Florida State and got a doctorate in business administration. And and came over here. Well, now you worked for I worked, the Board well, of Regents. I, for I worked for two years on the staff of the of the Board of Regents mm -hmm. on a budget, low level budget job. And came to uh, where did, did and I I don't think I've got the years right. Were, were you part of the first cohort of? Of uh, professors at UWF? No, no, I came along six, eight years later. Okay. Yeah, no, I came along in the mid seventies. Okay, and taught at UWF for, for nineteen years. A wonderful you. experience. Univer University of West Florida was very good to me, and I'm very grateful. Well, you've been good to it, and and since then, um, you you interact with the public. The, the way I know you interact with the public is you write a lot of viewpoints that appear in the Pensacola News Journal as recently as a day or two ago. Um, any other way? Do you do you lecture? No, no not anymore. No, no. Yeah, but but uh, for 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 what it's worth, I I think what you do is very valuable because well, you're you're objective. That's you, not universally thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, if if you take an un, we're going to talk about the port a little bit. I'm going to yeah, tell you the port. Yeah. The well, port just, lobby listen, is as strong the, as it can there, be. There there are people who think if you say a bad word about anything going on at the community community maritime park, you're just Unpatriotic. We all love Mr. Studer, and we all love our baseball team, and we do. I, I, it's very well run, and it's very good. But but we shouldn't leave out the fact that the, the city is going to have to. F our little city is just going to have to fund it like crazy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But uh, but I, I I think you're a, a unique resource. You're not running for office. No, you, you, don't, you don't have a business you want people to patronize. No. You're just you're just interested in this stuff and, yeah. and willing to willing to share it. Um, I don't know if 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 we've got a break coming up. This would probably be a good time because we've got some other important. Well, the port is one of the topics, and public pensions are another. And unfortunately, the theme is pretty much financial challenges for the city well, of Pensacola. Well, the whole country's in financial challenges, Absolutely. private and public. Yeah. Yeah, and and we've talked about it a bunch on this show. Pub, public sector pensions are a challenge, to put mm -hmm. it mildly, really and we can are. talk specifically yeah. about Pensacola if we're ready for a break. Within reason, we'll be back in a short time. Please stay with us. Good. Okay, so we got a little bit. Thirty years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida.
Welcome back to Within Reason. Bob Kerrigan is away on Bill Rankin. With me is Dr. Elabash who's been sharing some of what he knows about finances of the city of Pensacola. We recently talked about the Community Maritime Park, which, despite the great success of our baseball team, I'm a big Wahoos fan, as are, as are many people in Pensacola, it's, it's a big drain on the city. Did we quantify it? I mean, the, the, did, well, how, much, how much money, in rough terms, does a city get? We've kind of circled back to this because it's so important. The, does the, the, the baseball team pays a lease fee to the yeah, city, to yeah. the park. The ba right. baseball team is that's a tenant right. of the, that, the that, park. That's right. And the city owns the park. Yeah. And how did, how did these negotiations come about? I mean, well, uh, the, the, the arrival of the Maritime Park has a troubled past. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the troubling aspects of it is this, that in the early in 2011, when we first started the new mayor system, uh, the, the the city had not started the ballpark, mm -hmm. uh, nor did they have a lease for the baseball team. They had a lease for a smaller park, which would have been abandoned, uh, and, and for a, a larger park to accommodate the double eight eighteen. Mm -hmm. The city started construction on the ballpark before they had a lease. Uh -huh. They had immediately gave the team owners the upper hand. Well, of course. That they immediately because had the upper hand. Who had, is going to be a tenant for this park? How, how foolish suppose, would, that's would right. everybody look that's right. if they built this really nice park and they didn't have a team to put it in? They're the going to play little league games in there? The tenant had the upper hand, and, and I believe yeah. the tenant has had the upper hand in negotiation for the city ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how much it costs just, just to run the park? Just to no, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, a lot. I, 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 I've, I've guessed that the, the whole maritime park is going to cost the city. Uh, four or five billion a year. Uh, oh, that's debt directly service and, and everything else. Uh, yeah. uh, directly, they're going to pay uh, bond payments for about three million a year for mm -hmm. the next 25, that's, 30 yeah. years. Uh, they've, they've promised the ECUA to pay up to $19 million uh, to, to revitalize a, a re intermediation, I can't, re what do you call it, to clean up an environmental uh -huh, thing over the, the, over the old sewer yeah. plant. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that comes up to about seventy million. Uh, the city is going to have the city is going to have to support the maritime park directly and indirectly. Originally, this proposal was that commercial development was going to support it. Right. Well, the commercial development has not come to pass. A part of it may come to pass, uh, but the city, for example, uh, I noticed just in the in the, in the uh, mayor's budget for the next year that the parks and recreation department has created new positions to manage and operate the ballpark. Uh -huh. So the city is going to be directly in, and indirectly paying, uh, not the ballpark, the whole park. Uh, the city is going to be indirectly uh, and directly paying uh, to, to pay off the debt and maintain the, the maritime park, I, I estimate, four or five million dollars a year. That's and, really and the only a lot for the city. And least income they've got now is from the baseball team, right? And that at least income, it's a variable thing, but it's probably a, not more than five hundred thousand, and probably less than four hundred thousand. So wow. you see, the city's the wow. rest of that the city is making up. Well, just paying Gulf Power, I've heard some figures in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, I, for I don't, I don't know. To I keep the lights on down. There. I, I, I don't know. That's that's amazing. I, I don't know who's paying for what down there. Okay. Well, we'll 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 try to find out some yeah, more about that. Yeah. But but at best, the city's um, the city's going to have to come up with a lot of money. That's right. And and, yeah. the, and, then, and as the result is the city has uh, no new money for other projects. For example, a project that the city wants and needs is what they call a roundabout at mm -hmm. the corner of Alconies and, and, and East Garden Street, so mm -hmm. that people can eat, have a more attractive entry into Seville, mm -hmm. and to protect St. Michael's Cemetery from yeah. drivers the, the people at 1 o'clock in the morning running running into the, the fence. fence. That's right. Yeah. That, that in, but that, they don't have the money for it. And that's, that's going to have to be on the city, not the DOT? That's right. That's be a city project. Yeah. That's right. And and there are other projects. A uh, 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 one that's controversial is is uh, a roundabout, as they call them, mm -hmm. uh, at Ninth Avenue and Bayfront Parkway. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, that's some more controversy. I that's mean, that's right. And, the, and, and then when you throw Government Street reopening into that, it really becomes controversial. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, but there, as there, I understand it, there have been, been plans for a long time to open up the very east end of Government Street and connect it to Ninth Avenue and Bayfront. And now there's some people who live down there, of course, 
don't want that. And uh, and 30 years ago, when they closed it, there were people who lived down there that wanted it open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'll, you think it, 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 it's something that could oh, really make a, a difference? There's a lot of things that should need to be done down there to make, uh, as, I, as I said before, downtown Pensacola uh, is, is the f financial and, and, and legal center for the yeah. two-county area. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, and it is attracting people now. Yeah. It, is, it is attracting people now, but it could attract a lot more if they could do the kind of projects mm -hmm. uh, that the urban planners have suggested to yeah. them. And as I've heard it expressed, it, it isn't that the city's just going to run out of money to fund the pensions. Uh, the city's going to run out of money to pay the police and we won't have police. It's that the city won't have the money to do these other things uh, that's right. that we uh, that's, that's, want that's, that's for correct. the city to prosper. And, and as I said uh, in the first segment of the program, uh, the only thing I see that can be a, it'd be a godsend for the city if they could latch on with, join up with the University of West Florida and get the restore. BP yeah. sport funds get a sizable portion to redo the historic district in Pensacola. Well, we we need the, the I, I agree with you. There's there's a lot of great things about this city. A lot of good things about living here. But but there's some there's some problems ahead for well, sure. One thing that the that the leaders of this city don't seem to understand is we have a lot of poverty. Oh, and, yeah. and you know you say Pensacola's just great. Pensacola's yeah. going forward. Uh, in the, in the 10 years between the two censuses, 2000 and 2010, Escambia County grew by 1%. Yeah. And the city lost population. The city lost population. Yeah. And they said, yeah. well, but Gulf Breeze and Santa Rosa County grew. They did yeah. not grow enough to offset mm -hmm. uh, what was going on over here. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think I gave you a copy of a study I did on, the, on measures of poverty. And, and I, I ranked... Uh, the 25 largest counties in Florida mm -hmm. on some poverty measurements. And, and we are, uh, you know, around 20 or 23 or 24. Yeah, you know, we, are, we are we, a poor we, county. We, we sure. are behind most all of the other urban counties in Florida. Yeah. Why? Well, uh, we didn't change. We resisted change. Mm -hmm. We didn't take advantage of the waterfront we had down there. Uh, it, it resist, resistance yeah. has changed, like Government Street right now. So that, yeah. yeah. So, so that you uh, think a resurgence of of downtown uh, will uh, will help people didn't want to the change. west side of town and and the rest of the county because yeah, of we, jobs. We stagnated and so forth. And, and, yeah. uh, and and we fell behind. And I, and I people don't some people don't believe this, but I talked to a man who's a politician who had walked door to door in the last year. So I don't know, hundreds and hundreds uh -huh. of, up there. And he said he found out two things. He found out, one, that the people realize we're poor. Yeah. And the other is, a lot of them don't like the ballpark. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? But that's that's uh, anecdotal yeah, information. Yeah. That's, that's that, not that, scientific data. That is surprising. Data, uh, but it's interesting and that one who, someone who took the trouble to walk door to door yeah. is part of and a political campaign. And found out that found, people don't like the ballpark. That's what he said. Huh. Because the, the only reason for not He's liking... He's not a member of the establishment. Yeah. The only, it seems to me the only reason for not liking the ballpark, unless you just think, well, I can't afford it and therefore I don't like it, is the, the, the things we're talking about, the finances. Because otherwise well, it's, a, and, it's an and, attraction. And, and only up-income people can afford to regularly go to the ball games. Yeah. Well, or, the, the, I mean, do most, we know... Most that, people can afford to go one or two times a year or something like that. Yeah. But uh, not everybody can afford yeah. a season ticket. Uh, yeah, of course. Although the season ticket prices are, by, by the standards of mm -hmm. professional sports, yeah. very yeah. cheap, yeah. very affordable. Yeah. Um, and how, how, do we, I mean, how do we know that? Are there studies that, that say that, you know, the lower income people only come to the, or is it just common well, that's sense? That's my observation. Yeah. That's my observation. Yeah. I, I have no well, sense. Well, if it takes right. a family 40 or 50 yeah. bucks to go to yeah. the ballpark, yeah. certainly low yeah. income people yeah. can't go to that's 70 right. games right. that would eat yeah. up all their yeah. income. Yeah. 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 No, okay. that's my, my personal my personal conclusion, is that uh, that on a regular basis only only the better better off people, people can yeah. go. Well, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. the, the tickets aren't that expensive, but but if you do what I do, which is buy a, a beer and a hot dog, that's ten bucks. And if you've got your kids with you, that's that's more. Yeah. 
Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about something else because you started talking about the, the one of Pensacola's great advantages is the waterfront, and the city had all this waterfront property, and it, it's a it's a pretty view, and people like to be, and it's That's cooler right. until until Plaza de Luna opened. There was virtually no access to the waterfront yeah. unless you wanted to take your chances and cross Bayfront Parkway and get on that yeah. sidewalk on the other side. But uh, a, a lot of the pub, a lot of Pensacola's waterfront is taken up by the port, and that that's that's been contentious for a long time. I mean, do you know the history of the port? How you... Well, uh, people have given me information. The the, the 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 oldest piece of paper I've got was a newspaper report in 1970. Uh -huh by a committee that, in, that examined the port. And it was headed up by a, a then attorney named David L. Middlebrooks, later a federal uh -huh. judge, D. Yeah. L. Middlebrooks. And, and, and his, he, what he told the city council was, uh, it was obvious that the, uh, the other two counties were not, really to, were not willing to join in mm -hmm. and provide financial support. Uh, there, was a, there was a committee in the uh, mid-1980s that Judge Lacey Collier chaired. And you were, you were on, I, I that, on that committee. One. There was one about 1988 or 89 that mm -hmm. former Councilman Howard Ryan uh, chaired, and the purpose of it was to, to write a, a charter. And, and, uh, but when we finished, uh, the delegate from Milton said his people were not interested. Mm -hmm. So the city council did not pursue it. There was another committee in 1994 chaired by then Councilman Rhett Anderson uh, to do a Port Authority. Uh, after a few months, I quit meeting because it was clear that the uh, Santa Rosa County representatives. Well, and what, the, what's the inducement for what, what's in it for Santa Rosa County? I mean, are there that, there aren't that many jobs at the port, are there? Well, no, uh, no, there are not many jobs at the port. Especially now uh, that they're more automated. Uh, well, they apparently feel there is no inducement because they never show. Yeah, why would they? Yeah. And, and, and if they, if they, were, if they like the port, why should we support if Mount is going to do it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, well, yeah, you well, got it. They had another committee in the late 90s, uh, chaired by Admiral Pete Booth, and it was, uh, he's a great guy, and, and, and he did a great job. And, and they finished uh, recommending a port authority, uh, and they were never able to get either the Santa Rosa County Commission or the Scambia County Commission to even put it on the agenda. Uh -huh. Not only whether not they wouldn't consider it, they wouldn't even put it on the agenda, yeah. and that that tells you that the lack of the lack of the support for the port of Pensacola is those few people who benefit from it or think they benefit from it, and and a, a core of people here who who have great emotional and sentimental longing for the port. The port is a sacred cow. It has been a sacred cow at City yeah. Hall for years. Yeah. And is it subsidized every year? I know it's subsidized. Well, the, 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 it, it, normally the, the port gets enough revenues to pay the operating costs. Mm -hmm. But the big cost of ports is capital outlay. And they, they cannot do the money for capital outlay. They get help from the city or from the state mm -hmm. on capital outlay. Now, I just looked at some tables before I came down here this afternoon. And, and in the last 25 years, the city has transferred up, uh, over $20 million to from port. city accounts to the port uh -huh. in the last 25 years. Now, the port supporter will tell you that in years past, the port contributed to the general fund of mm -hmm. the city. I've not been able to find any evidence that the port of <laughs> the only evidence ever made I, any contribution. I have, I have I know two friends who were on the last city appointed uh -huh. port authority in the 1960s, and they both said the same thing. We told the city to take it back because we you couldn't make any money. Uh huh. So it's, it's, ne it's never made money. That's that's all yeah. fantasy. Well, other than the amount now, now I guess there's. There are there are some jobs for people who unload ships. Uh, I, I haven't made a check lately, but uh, a t I, I would guess right now that if you count the people who 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 work, you say unload ships. Yeah. What ships? Yeah. Well, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't the, doesn't the cement I don't, I don't operation think, bring I, in? I don't think. I doubt that there are more than thirty or forty full-time equivalent mm -hmm. workers at the port. Uh, and they, it's 50 acres, and they and they have revenues of two million dollars. Within wow. a couple hundred yards of the port, there are many professional firms that sit on an acre worth of land and have revenues greatly in excess of two yeah. million dollars. Yeah. Right next to the port, there's a building with a rest, two restaurants in it and right. some offices, 
and, and they have at least 100, maybe more, full-time equivalent jobs sitting mm -hmm. on a three or four acres and the port's on 50 acres with maybe 40. Yeah. So it's kind of lost opportunity, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. But what's to be done? Now, I don't know if this has changed, but not well, too many years ago, it, it, we it, had this cement plant that with a 25-year lease, wasn't it? Well, yeah, we run through about, it's about 22 years, I think. 20 years, I think it was. We okay. run through about half of it. Oh, okay. It expires, I think, in, 20, in 2022. Yes. Yes. Well, that, does that mean well, we can't do anything until 2022? I guess we could buy well, them out of the lease. Well, somebody want to buy them out. I understand they're not doing much, much business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe they would but agree But there's to... some property down there that could be leased yeah. out now. About six years ago, there was a developer who wanted to develop the yeah. west side of the port. Have you ever yeah. heard this story? Mr. Russenberger, wasn't no, it? No, no, no. wasn't. No, no, it was Jim Cronley. Oh, okay. And he wanted to develop the west side of the port. And he, he even hired out-of-town... Uh, urban architects to uh -huh. come here and help him, and, and they came down, and, and and after they'd been here a couple of days, he canceled the whole thing because the city didn't want him to develop the port. They had bogus reasons. One of the reasons was they were saving a warehouse for cruise ships. Oh my God! Uh, another was there was some effort, wasn't there? Some kind of a cruise ship or a gambling ship that was in here for a while. And, oh, years ago, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure. Was it gambling? I don't. There know. was. There was some. There, there was something yeah, I remember yeah. reading about a few years ago. About we, we've had a couple of these uh, intercoastal cruise ships yeah. come here, but not in, not in recent years. So we're not going to get cruise business and. Well, just... Mobile got got has a twenty three million dollar cruise terminal, but no cruise ships. <laughs> wow, okay. So, uh, what goes on down there? I mean, the. the Not much. Yeah. I, uh, and I know they're housing the, that enormous the, uh, cable laying the, ship. The, the, the asphalt uh, place and, and the gravel, the, what mm -hmm. they call gravel these days, and the cement are automated operations. Yeah, there's of only a handful of people. Yeah. Uh, done by there's a, a, a company down there that's involved with the shipment of frozen chicken overseas. Uh huh. And, and I, that business is, I think, is probably at a standstill. There's not much there. But that's intermittent and temporary yeah. work. Now, so on, a, on, annual, on, on a full-time equivalent basis, it's very low. Wouldn't, wouldn't it take, I mean, let's, let's say that the, the city wanted to do something, but wouldn't it take, uh, would, wouldn't you have to have environmental cleanup? I mean, wouldn't you have to invest many, many millions well, of dollars to well, turn it into something well, else? That's, a, that's something they should, they've put off doing. They've never done it. Yeah. And I was told by one former city official, we're afraid to do it because we don't know what we're going to find. Yeah. Well, that's, that was an excuse well, not to do it. Yeah. Uh, that's right. The, the, the city should have an environmental yeah. evaluation yeah. made. But with today's environmental standards and, and well, cement and all the stuff they they've had in there and then asphalt. Then you ought to know that. Yes. You ought to know that. Yeah. If it's uh, the, the the mayor has appointed three good committees. One's the one you on the pension committee. The other they did had a port committee last year. About the time yours is, and they and they give a very good report. They recognized uh, that we sh we should keep some uh, a limited uh, deep sea port capability, mm -hmm. limited down the south end of the port. But they recommended that other uses uses other uses be found for other portions of the port. And, uh, but nothing's happened. Now, uh, there's a warehouse down there called Warehouse Number 4. Mm -hmm. I forget how big it is and it's modern. Sitting just at the head uh, of Confidential Slip. Uh -huh. A valuable piece of property. Yeah. And the city has never put out an RFP. Never put out a request for a proposal for it. Because the port is a sacred cow. Good grief. We, that's my, my yeah. that's why well, I you think, think with all the fresh winds blowing through and yeah now they do have the, they do have some business down there uh, that they've gotten in the last couple of years uh, servicing ships that that deal with the yeah. offshore thing yeah and, and that's good business yeah it won't support the port but it's it's good business they bring in yeah. some fantastic looking ships that yeah. people like well, to, that, that to look at. Well, that ship that's been down that's there right. for a long and time they, is and they have, they amazing. Have a, they have a few jobs, like that ship that's been down there, they, they're working on that. Yeah. And I don't know how many people are working on it, but, but that's, that's good business. Uh, but, I, you know, we, we, for years we've been here and something's good about to happen at the port. And we've and heard that's does. going to happen, but yeah. then it never happens. Never does. Never happens. Yeah. That's, so that's, we're going to gonna take a short break. With me is Dr. Clarence Elabash, Professor Emeritus at UWF and very knowledgeable about finance. What well, used to teach finance? 
about finance and uh, in general and city finances in particular. And in our next segment, we're going to uh, we're going to get back into the uh, the public pension uh, situation and challenges. Please stay with us. Within reason, we'll be right back. For over 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida. Welcome back to Within Reason. Bob Kerrigan is away. I'm Bill Rankin, and with me is Dr. Alabash, and we've been uh, pleased to have him on for the whole show talking about important local issues. And and I I think we're kind of unique in that, you know. I mean, uh, uh, as uh, and, and and we're we're also somewhat proud of it that we've been able to talk about without. Without fear or favor, talking about the, the uh, local issues. And if you talk about the problems, there's always somebody that doesn't like it. And um, I'm sure there's some folks who uh, are not crazy about some of your opinions. Which <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and maybe have made it known to you. But there's nothing they can do to you. You're retired. That's and, right. That's and, right. Um, yeah. Um, but, and we, we've talked about it before on the show, but it's, it's very, very important. And it's the issue of public sector Pensions and actually, it's not just pensions because we pay health care for some That's retirees, right. That's right. which is which is another expense. Um, is 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 what's going on in Pensacola part of a national trend of oh, problems yeah. with yeah. public sector oh, pensions? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. what what are the problems? Is yeah. it just that the stock well, market uh, collapsed? Uh, well, first, I want to say this is real a real critical issue because it's very important to the employees and it's very important. Yeah. To the employer, which in this case is yeah. the city, it's it's a nationwide. Right. And and the employees, and we have some very good employees. We'll that's tell right. you, we, we're taking less in salary. That's probably less true now. We take less in salary to have good retirement, and the public safety people have shorter careers, and they were promised this. That's right. That's what they will be and, and, very and, quick and, to tell you. But it's it's in their best interest and the city's best interest is some to come to some sort of accommodation. That, that reduces the obligation. Now, the obligation is big. Uh, the last actuary, I, I really should defer to you because you were on the pension committee, but I'll, yeah. if I give some wrong numbers, you can correct me. Uh, the last actuary report about a year ago, it said that the, the city of Pensacola pension funds, of which there are five, three yeah. main ones, but there are yeah. a couple others, yeah. uh, was, was, uh, had an unfunded liability of about $115 million. Yeah. What, what does that mean? That means... An unfunded liability. That means if you project out future benefits and future revenues, you're short, you're short. $115 million. Yeah. Over what period of time? Well, normally in pension funds, either private pension funds under federal law or public pension funds under the respective state laws, they usually give a 20- or 30-year period mm -hmm. to make it up. So it, it doesn't happen. It's not all yeah. at once. It's made but, up. But even if you divided it by that big number yeah. of years, yeah. it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Well, yeah. there's, that's 115. Now, in addition, as you mentioned, the city's also promised health benefits to retirees, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's no the, none of it's funded. And, that, and an actuary report, they haven't had an actuary report on that in about. But well, does or the four city years. just fund it as as, as the bills goes, come that's in? That's right. And and that would be about 35 million. So we're up to 150 million. Wow. Uh, and then there's a wild card, and wow. the wild card is the assumed rate of return on investments. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's probably worth talking about this because it's easy to throw it around well, like man, you know something. You, you, you just dealt with it. I'll, I'll, I'll well, back off. Well, no, the, um, ha, for, first of all, and we've talked about it on the show, and, it, and it's, not, it's not readily understandable. You have to think about it a little bit. There's an actuarial rate. 
that that gets set for pension funds, and I guess it's true for all pension funds. You have to you have well, to all defined benefit funds. You, you ha right, not four hundred one ks. So you have to make. You, you correct me if I'm wrong. You're a finance professor, and I never took a finance course, but you have to assume that your investments. Then there's a lot of money invested for all these pension funds, just not enough, but a lot of money uh, will bring a certain rate of return. And what's what's the rate of return that's assumed now? It's assumed is eight percent. Eight percent. Now, <laughs> what what we know if you if you look at MSNBC and read Warren Buffett about what we can expect to re re get back on our investments, is that a, a tad uh, high? Uh, 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 that might have been reasonable in the 1990s, yeah. uh, but it's now clear, I think, that the American economy, the world economy, is changing, and we cannot assume that we're going to get a return of 8 percent on average right. uh, and, year. And, and, yeah. and, and, and so that means that the, uh, the 150 million we've added up so far uh, it's a little short. It's a little short. That's yeah. right. Uh, and uh, that's a very, very sensitive issue, uh, because if, the, if all of a sudden the city changes its, its actuarial mm -hmm. assumption from eight to six, that tens of millions of dollars. I'm not an actuary, but I, I would on the back right. of the envelope, you know the, I think it'd be tens assumption. of millions of dollars. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And if well, let, let's let's yeah, let's talk about not only what it is, but what happens. So let's say. And we'll talk about the mechanism of it. Let's say the actual rate does go down. I and mean, some people are talking about five would be more reasonable. Let, but let's well, say it goes down substantially. Yeah, I, I would, what uh, happens? Well, what happens is when you get your next actuary report, you find that your unfunded liability has gone up and what, substantially. And then, so some actuary writes on a piece of paper, okay, unfunded liabilities are $200 million. What, what does that mean? What happens? Does the city have to come up with more money right now? That and means that according to state law, you got uh -huh. the next 20 or 30 years, whatever the law is now, you've got to take steps Start paying to eliminate that down. To eliminate so the state that. will say to the, right. to the city, That's right. and, and if, if the investments aren't enough, the city's on the hook for it, uh, that's right? That's right. That's right. Our little city. And, and in the old days, the, the rationale was, well, cities can raise taxes. Well, yeah, they can't do that anymore. Well, well not, not substantially. The city can raise taxes a little bit, but at what cost? I yeah, mean, we're trying to attract yeah, businesses. Yeah, and yeah. It's in the best interest of the city and the employees. The city doesn't want a bunch of disgruntled employees. You right. Know? We've, we've, we have good city services in this community. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, we have, I think we do, too. And uh, we, we've got to find some kind yeah. of accommodation. But, but we've made promises, and the one I know about, I was on the police pension board, the one I know about most is the policemen. We've made some promises to these policemen that, that quite frankly, don't make a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, they're just too generous. For example, if when a city policeman retires, he, he has paid in, in, in the military, as I understand it, and you would know because you retired from the military, you, you, get, uh, you, you get a rate of return based on your rank and your years of service and stuff. And if you want a survivor benefit, you take a little less, don't That's you? That's right. In other words, you know, you have to put away a certain amount of money. You, 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 you pick a person or a bunch of people and you say, well, we're going to have to pay this pension for so many years. But if you have to pay the pension for the life of both the pensioner and the spouse, on average, that's going to be more years. So that's going to cost more money. So if you elect the, the spousal benefit, then you take less in your retirement. And... That's a, I guess when you retire from the military, you have to check a box, and it's a, mm -hmm. an important decision. Well, for the city police, they make no such election. They're going to get all their pension money, and whoever they're married to at, at the end of their life just keeps getting that pension money, and I came up with not this. Not even a reduced amount? Not a reduced amount, 100%. They, yeah, so it's not reduced anywhere except reducing the mm -hmm. pockets of the mm -hmm. taxpayers. And I came up with this, and I've mentioned it a couple of times. So... Uh, you know, a 70-year-old retired policeman with heart trouble who's single can decide, well, I'm going to give a 2 or $3 million benefit to my favorite barmaid. Come on up, and on my deathbed, we'll get married. I said, is that possible? Yes. You don't have to be married at the time of your retirement. You just have to be legally married. Well, a notary can marry you in about 10 minutes and th thus give a gift of city money uh, to, let's say marry somebody who's 20 years old 
for the rest of their life with cost of living increases. And I don't know what the cost of that is, but it's got to be an, a staggering cost. Now, the politicians, I guess, because they want to be favored by the, the uh, well, fraternal that, that, order that's of police. Part of the uh, part yeah. problem is that both the firemen and the police pension funds get some state money. Yes. And the state yeah. makes some rules and regulations at the instigation of the fire and police organizations. Yeah. And if you don't comply with them, then that, you lose the state money. Right. Right. About 30 years ago, that almost happened with the police fund. So that kind of, that forces them to... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So they're, and, and, oh, there are just a lot of problems with it. And, well, and we know it can't it can be gamed the way they, the way they decide on what your pension's going to be. And I, I think in the police, it's the best three out of the last five years or something. I, I don't know. Well, you can spike it. I mean, with the collusion of other soon-to-be retirees, you know, you just get tons of overtime. And that not only affects the amount of money you're getting that year, it affects the next however long you live, 30, 40, 50 yeah, years, if yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just hyper, it's just awfully, awfully expensive. And it's big business. I, I, I looked up today to see how much the pension funds were worth. Now, this is the last year's numbers. Mm -hmm. But there are $250 million in the three pen, major pension funds. Yeah. A lot That's money. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Well, pension pension stuff is interesting, isn't oh, it? I mean, yeah. when you're on one of these pension boards, the nice thing about it, the pension boards are volunteers. You don't get. Yeah. They'll give you a cup of coffee yeah. and water at the meeting is yeah. about it. But they'll send you to these seminars, yeah. and all these big shot money people are there because our. When I was on the police board, I think we had a, something like thirty-eight, forty million dollars, which is minuscule in. Pension, public pension terms, yeah. but it's an awful lot of money. And think of all these cities all around, billions and billions of dollars. So a lot of big shot money managing yes. people would That's show right. up and right. they'd teach you a lot. And it was, yeah. it was very yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and As a matter of interest, uh, the general fund and the police fund are currently funded at about 65 percent of, of what of their Wow. What you should have. Oh. The farmers do a little better. They're about 85%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they I, contribute more now. They, 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 they contribute 11% of their, yeah. of their... Well, the police, I think it's like 0.5%. Yeah. Now. Well, the, the farmers contribute 11%. Yeah. The farmers are the best informed people around oh. because f farmers have to sit a lot of time in the, <laughs> the farm. When they're not fighting fires, <laughs> they're all, they're they all become they, lawyers. They, they sit they all around become and pension lawyers. Well, these, first of all, I've, I've had a lot of interaction in various ways. We've represented some, we uh, witnesses. Um, these, they, they may not be finance professors with PhDs, but, but they're smart people, and, and they, good, they know I, I a lot about it. on the Farmers Pension Board, and they're, they're good people, and they're conscientious yeah. people. And they're knowledgeable. Oh, very knowledgeable. And, of course, very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. So if one side has all the knowledge and the regular taxpayers are out there snoozing in front of their TVs, mm -hmm. uh, you wind up in this situation. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's the remedy? I mean, we've got collective well, I, bargaining. I, and the and, remedy is that this, this is... It's, it's so important to both parties right. to reach some kind of an accommodation uh, that will relieve some of the pressure on the, on the city fund. Because uh, apparently, I, I, I'm, I, I haven't projected it and not seen a projection, but apparently uh, it ain't going to get better. Right. It's, gonna, it's not going to get better, and they've got to have some kind of accommodation. Yeah. Well, every year you're not making your actuarial rate just adds to the problem. That's right. right. I mean, and, I, and, and, and really, the actuarial rate don't make any difference because what what makes well, that's the what, money. What, what, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In but, fact, yeah, a, 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 a lower actuarial rate may may force a little prudence because you you it, wouldn't have it, quite it, the unfunded uh, liabilities. It might. It might. Yeah. Yeah. What? Why do we have? And I don't know. I don't know about other states, but. But we had separate boards and separate pension funds for police, fire, and the general fund. Now the general funds become a little more complicated because a lot of those folks are in the mm -hmm. state retirement system. What is is that the way it's done? That every police department with, you know, a couple of hundred. I, I really don't know about municipalities, but with, with states, uh, there out of the fifty states, there's something like a hundred and. 15 state pension funds. Uh -huh. some, are, well, some only have one fund, like Florida. Some have one for teachers yeah. and other funds. Yeah. Some have some, one for the judicial, 
one for the teachers, one for yeah. the other. But, but we have a couple of them just for the city of Pensacola, oh, yeah. which I, is I not... Don't know. I, don't, I, 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 I don't know what the, the what goes on. Is. I don't know what the yeah, pattern is. What goes is on, on across the country. Yeah. But, but are, are, do some states just incorporate all of it under the state? I know... I, I probably do. I don't I, know that, I, but they probably... Yeah, I talked to a gentleman the, the who Florida was... The Florida State Fund is, 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 is doing is okay. consistently uh, 90 to 100% yeah. funded. Yeah. I, I was talking to uh, a guy who's a councilman, and my relatives are up in New Jersey, and he's a uh, city councilman in a small city in New Jersey, and he's talking about... You know the usual problems. Yeah. The property values have gone down. Yeah. Their their ad valorem tax collections have gone down, and he's he's got to negotiate with his policemen because they got their own little police force. And I said, well, what about what about the uh, retirement? He said, thank God, that's the state's problem. That's, well, that's not good. our problem. So that's his good. his little city. Well, that's good. That's yeah, good. just that's good. D deferred that's to good. the state. And 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 eventually the state will have a bigger role in, in, yeah. in the, over here. And 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 after I'm told after a few years that it will begin to have a beneficial effect uh, on, on the status of the pension funds over here, uh, that, that over, long, over the long term, the state pension fund is a better deal for Pensacola than the funds oh, they have. Oh, sure, sure. Well, for, for a lot of reasons. I yeah. mean, the way they calculate the pensions and everything else, mm -hmm. they're, they're less generous, which is why there's, there's resistance to it. But there's, there's some thinking, and I, I can't speak for the mayor, but I kind of suspect he agrees with this. The city ought to be out of the defined benefit business entirely. Um, there's nothing wrong with defined benefit plans for public employees, but let, let the state do it. And, yeah, it will be better for us. But, but here we are with the, uh, the three different unions for the police, and uh, they've pretty much had their way up until now. I'm, I'm thinking now that public sentiment may be turning around to think that we, we can no longer be so generous. But what if they just bow up? What if the unions, and you're not just dealing with the, the retirees, you're dealing with the union, and the union has its own interests. You know, if, the, if, if it weren't for the retirement, there wouldn't be a, a big role for the union, and they, they want to endure, so they want to keep this going. What if they just bow up and say, well, we're, we're not agreeing to that? Do you, do you know what happens? Well, you're, the, you're an attorney. You tell me. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm, not that, I'm not that kind of a lawyer. So, and anyway, we, we've just got a couple of minutes to, to uh, sum up. And, and the good news so far has been that, well, the city has a lot of advantages, but... but we have not done what, as well as... as what about finance? I mean, do, do we have... Is there any good news in the, in the area of... City finances <laughs> at all? I well, mean, I, I know we've got I, the I beach and had, sunshine yeah. and good feelings, yeah, but where's the yeah. money? I, I, I'm kind of hard put to, to give you a, a, a clear a clear answer on that. I, I think the city is is managed. The financial management, I think, is excellent. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, I think sometimes in the past the city has not as been as transparent. Sometimes yeah. you don't find out something unless you ask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we have run out of time. I've, I've greatly enjoyed having well, you on the you show, Dr. Elabrash. I really appreciate it. It's been knowledgeable. Join us next week for Within Reason. Bob will be back. Good night. Mm -hmm. For over 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida.